Warriors is going to be, I guess, an event for boosters, people who donate to Kane Connections. Uh, I mean, um, season ticket holders, one tier, you have the opportunity to go to an event um, that they have in. Um, I'm not going. You know, I'm going to see the game. I'm going about my business, man. I don't do all that. But, yeah, we here, man, on spring practice yesterday. Um, not a lot going on. You know, I think they just basically trying to get um, the depth chart situated as far as first, second, third team, so on, so on, get in some scripted plays. Um, from what I was told, it's not going to be a lot of plays scripted. They're going to basically go off of, go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? See what works and what doesn't work, um, what players belong in certain situations and stuff like that. So it's not going to be like a scripted game. Um, it'll basically be almost like a scrimmage style. And uh, they say one's going to go versus one's. The two's going to get the go versus ones also, so on, so on, and then everybody else will get some playing time. So. Mm -hmm. Cal, I, know like you I know you don't like it like that, Cal. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, I got a question for you, X, though, that you may be able to answer for everybody. How, how, um, how well or how well can you evaluate um, your kids when it's like, like I understand like situational football, right? How well can you um, evaluate your kids in the spring when it is a scripted game? Well, okay, so it goes like this. You have Mario comes and says, okay, Coach Dawson, Coach, Coach Gildry, um, I'm going to give you maybe 40 plays that we want to see work throughout the season. And then the rest will be all right, man, go ahead and just call plays. You know what I'm saying? See what can work. So, you know, with the first teams, I think it's going to be some tough real battles because you want to see what what what, what are you going to do when you come out for the game plan as far as a regular game. So normally a coach will get like 30 plays. They'll have scripted, um, and then they go from there. So it'll be something like that. How can you see uh, – I mean, you do, well, I guess the, hey, the hey, tough assessment me, me is going question. one versus one. The tough assessment is yeah. going one versus one. Let, let me add to the question. I, I should have said this instead. How well can you evaluate when it's scripted, but you're also trying to be as vanilla as possible? Like, especially with Mario, you know, we don't want to put too much on tape. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's that's hard. That's hard to say because you know it's going to be vanilla. It's not going to be like anything we see throughout the season, but at the same time. You'll have moments where you'll see certain plays ran throughout the season. So again, the ones versus ones, I think that's what we should pay attention to. A, a, most of the part, like who's in versus the offense versus the defense, the ones. Now, when the backups and stuff start coming in, we can say, "Man, okay, well, they just finna run plays and see who's gonna who's gonna be beneficial when these plays are called." Because at the end of the day, it's going to be vanilla. You know, they not going to give us anything they're going to show throughout the season. Everything we see is going to be basically, well, this is what we've been running in practice. Um, it works, it works, it don't. We going, we got something different for the season. That's that's what it's going to be. So so, so you telling me that flea flicker that we're going to run, that go back to Cam and to throw the Cam McCormick streaking down the field, you telling me we ain't going to see that one? Well, I would hope we don't see it, uh, cause <laughs> if, if if we we do see that man, Cam McCormick still gonna be the uh, he gonna what, ran a five yard play before <laughs> we get him downfield. <laughs> nah, I'm let um, you do my dog like that. <laughs> nah, but you know, you know, man, look, Cam Cam is the older guy in the room. He comes in, he blocks, he does everything the coaches want. Um, I'm not expecting him to be a weapon as far as being a, a pass catcher this year because Elijah Royo is healthy. Uh, you got uh, Lofton coming in, and then you got Riley Williams. So we got three tight ends we can expect to catch the ball. And if Cam McCormick get passes thrown to him, it got to be he's just wide fucking open. He's just like nobody's within 10 yards of him. 
Oh man, y'all leave my dog alone. How has Riley looked? Like we've heard, like you know, everybody we love what we hear about Elijah. We expect what we hear about a Royal. How Riley has how, how is Riley um progressing? Riley's looked a lot better. He's looked a lot better. Um, I think again when I when I tell everybody last year he was thrown into the hot fire, he was still immature. He didn't know the college game. He didn't know the speed of it. Um, his body was getting where you know worn down because you playing now you playing against grown men like I say man you know you got six seven year college players these guys 24 25 Riley was like 19 you know what I'm saying and that's kind of hard for a 19 year old to be throwing up against those age brackets but he's looked a lot better as far as running routes um pass catching also blocking wise uh he has to yeah, he still has to get better with that he has to get better at the attack of point because normally when he comes to block, he'll come straight up. And he's a big, tall kid. And he has to he has to know that he can't stand straight up because when you stand straight up, the defense is going to get you. I think they'll work with him with that. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's, he looked a whole lot better than he did last year. Mm, okay, that's good. Because I, I think one of the questions is um... – like what what room like because i know after the spring we're going to be able to see okay we might need to like you say the one i think the ones across the board i think it's going to be a nice battle across the board you know what i'm saying the safety spot i may be a little edgy on but i think everybody's going to be excited like because we got zaquan in there even though he's not going to be a one um we got you know we got mish you know what i'm saying even though he's going to probably be more uh whatever that to Corey couch role or whatever but I think all the, the ones are gonna, money. yeah, the money. So I think all the all the ones are gonna be in a nice battle. I think what you're gonna be looking for is see where the tools and stuff perform, so we can see what, if anything, we need to get out of the portal. So like, what 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 um what position groups do you think that we might be looking for depth in if like somebody don't prove themselves? Um, secondary secondary is the first group I'm gonna speak of. You're gonna need depth there with cornerback and safety. It's just, we just don't have the numbers. Um, as far as being on the field. So if you got a first, second, and third unit, we just don't have that uh, as far as in the secondary. Um, first unit, if if everyone is healthy, the first unit you'll have Daryl Porter, um, obviously Mari Brown, and Jadis Richards. And then coming after him, you will have Robert Stafford. It's like, eh, you know, that's, that's it. You know, everything else is like, okay, well, you need something else. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you got freshmen coming in, but you don't necessarily always want to rely on freshmen. Um, and then that safety, that safety unit, and it's not as bad as everyone may think it is. It's just the game experience isn't there. You know, outside of Riley, and he's only played one year, I think. One, maybe one year at Vanderbilt, I think. And then you have Powell, but he's a big money guy, so we're not even counting him as a legitimate safety. Now you go with Marquise Williams, Jalen Harris, and, and, and Zaquan Patterson. You know, so you're looking at guys who really don't have much game experience. Uh, so yeah, you definitely just have to, you're gonna have to tap into the portal for that. It's a safety that I've heard going to hit the portal. Miami is going to be interested if once it happens next week. Um, I'm not sure it's gonna happen fast, but he's gonna be targeted by a lot of schools, a lot of colleges. You know what I'm saying? So Miami going to have to do their due diligence to make that one work. As far as cornerback, it's some names I've heard that's going to hit the portal. Miami's obviously going to go after. Again, Miami going to have to do their due diligence to make it work um, there and, and so on and so on. So, yeah, the secondary is the one room I'm – I want us to get depth, you know what I'm saying, so we can, so we can have game experience, not just to have them on the team. The other rooms, um, obviously running back, I might as well go ahead and put it out there. Yeah, it's been said that uh, Mark Fletcher's not going to be ready for the season. Um, we've known that for a while. I guess you know, I definitely didn't want to put it out there. I wanted the family to say it first, but it's already out. So, yeah, he's not going to be ready for the season. Losing um, Henry Paris is a big blow. So Miami is going after a running back in the portal. The running back that that the staff was already going to most likely approach hit the portal the other day. Martinez, um, he's one. He it's another running back that's that that they want also. 
he just has to hit the portal. Can't say the name until he exactly hit the portal. But Martinez is one that the staff definitely will try to uh, pursue. Most likely, he's going to be inter in interested in come for a visit, and we go from there. The rest of the rooms outside of, uh, yeah, I think every other room I'm kind of cool with because I think with the D-line, with the interior guys, you have guys coming in and for freshmen that they think can play right away with Justin Scott and Artavis Jones. Um, then you have Booker Pickett coming in. Um, you know, you, uh, Rudolph, he's coming in. I'm still waiting to see if he's going to be in at summer A or summer B. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of okay, okay with the rest of the, the units, with the team. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Oh, okay. Well, Y'all heard it here first. Caleb Downs is getting into the portal, and Miami's going to go get him. Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> Listen. Listen. Stop that, Stop that. Don't, have people, don't have people trying to kill me because I can't kill you. Nah, but um, nah, that's a pretty good assessment, man. Um, so dude, let me let me let me ask you this: when we're still talking about assessment, is there besides the safety room, could there possibly be a kid that hits the portal? Not that you know any names, but could you see? Uh, a kid hitting the portal that can be a starter and Miami going after him and making him not making him a starter, but saying, yeah, Bucky, you, I think you, this type of receiver, come on in. I think besides running back in safety, I think you, this type of receiver, come on in. I think you, this type of D tackle, come on in. Like, could you see that possibility? Yeah. Yeah. So listen, um, Miami going to be open to take any kid that's can help them right away at any position outside of quarterback. Obviously you're not going to take another quarterback. Um, but Running back, receiver, um, even office alignment, tight end, every position other than quarterback, and obviously kicker and punter, they'll take somebody because we just need the help depth. Um, I keep preaching that to be an elite football team, you need 75 players who can come in and be ready to play at any given moment. Miami, we still like maybe 20, 15, 15 to 20 players short of having that depth where we can trust guys enough if player A gets hurt and he's done, you know what I'm saying, player B, he's dinged up, and then player C, he's not A or B, but he's serviceable. You know what I'm saying? We just don't have that depth issue. I mean, that, the, the, that depth right, luxury right now. So, um, yeah, they open to take anybody for, you know, and I'm going I'm to keep it buck. Once April 15 hit, man, I'm – I'm gonna turn my phone off because the portal's gonna be crazy. I don't even care. <laughs> I'm not gonna pay attention to it. People are already hitting me saying, "Hey, X boy, you heard such and such." I'm like, I didn't hear nothing. I don't know because it's gonna be crazy. Um, it's a lot of backdoor tampering going on around college football, where teams are already contacting some of these players, um, and trying to make things happen. And this is this is NFL free agency. This is probably worse than NFL free agency. <laughs> Actually, some would call it anarchy. Free agency involves expired contracts and binding agreements. Mm -hmm. it, it look, it, Steve Kim, it's crazy because, oh, just for example, the running back you just leave from Oregon. Um, they, I don't know how true they saying he was supposed to make four hundred thousand last. I mean, supposed to make four hundred thousand. I'm like, okay, you're gonna make four hundred thousand over there, and you're the one. You're a running back is one. Why would you leave? That's just crazy. It's like, okay, so somebody else is basically saying we will pay you more than 400000 Yeah, and you know, he's a solid running back, but, I, I mean, he's really good. He averages six yards a carry, which at the college level makes you well above average. But I, I don't know. Does that mean that some other team that's a running back away is going to offer him seven fifty? You know? <laughs> well, okay, so I've heard, I've heard Michigan State, his coach left, his coach is at Michigan State, um, Michigan State, they're another team that's that's going to open their pay their pocketbook. Um, I'm yeah, that's 750. I'm that's a lot. I'm not sure you pay that much for a running back if you if you have running back by committee, especially at Miami. Yeah, so, yeah, and they already got their quarterback, Aiden Childs. He went with Jonathan Smith to uh East Lansing. Yeah, so I, I don't know what they do in college. They value the running back more in college and NIL than a 
non-starting quarterback. <laughs> That's all. I don't know. I don't know what the salary cap situation is in this level of football. Yeah, it's, look, these salary caps. It, look, I've heard a kid already has no snaps in college football. I'm not gonna say his name. He has no snaps. Highly rated kid in college football. He's been in college for two years. He's asking somebody right now for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I was like, well. How, you know, how do you, how did you even come up with that? Like, well, you know, what's the value? But, you know, I can't, you know, I can't hate because kids understand they're being un undervalued. So they're saying, man, look, I'm going to ask them for maybe the, the, the maximum amount. And then if they decline, maybe I go down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's how it's working. But yeah, this is getting crazy, man. It's getting crazy, hey, crazy. Speaking of running backs, the, from what you've seen, is Travante Citizen, you think, physically able and ready to be at least a rotational running back this season? Okay, so in, in the type of offense that Mario's – okay, in the type of offense that Coach Dawson ran last year, I think he's, he'll be good because we, we have four running backs that got over 50 carries plus. So I think – if it was just say if we did the same thing situation, we have four running backs. I think he'll be good for us getting 50, 50 carries plus. Now, if when it starts to come down to a hundred carries and more than that, it's like okay, I don't know if his body going to go through that because you know he is coming off that knee injury. But um, just he's physically gifted. Just don't know if he's going to be able to take that that getting hit 15, 20 times a game. No perk, you know that's a lot. Of, that's a lot, you know, wearing and tear on his body, though. But he, yeah, I mean, because from what I've seen, so let's get our running man. back. We need a hammer. If there's no Fletcher, we need a big back that can move the pile in a in a four minute offense. If you want to close it out, we got we got Citizen though. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's what we're that's, hoping. That, we're yeah, hoping we have Citizen. Citizen, Citizen, Citizen. He's that. Again, he just have to go through the. Getting hit 15, 20 times. Um, he has to go through the blocking, stuff like that, catching the ball out the backfield. Um, but again, I don't know. We don't we know Mario is not going to just give one running back 30 carries per game. You know what I'm saying? There's gonna be three running backs getting touches. So I'm cool with that. I you know, I don't want him getting 30 carries again. If he get 10, I'm happy. That, that, that's gonna be 10 hard ran um rushes for him. Um but yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, obviously, with 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 the Mar Fletcher news, obviously, yeah, we're going after another running back to help us with that, you know. And then the Jai Allen, he has to get back healthy. So it's like we got to see what we're gonna be able to do, man. This the the one bad thing I'm gonna say about this program, man. I don't understand how can we be a medical school and we have the worst medical program when it comes to our football players. I don't know. That's that's just amazing to me. Like, man, y'all spending all this money building hospitals, and you telling me y'all can't keep these players healthy? But hey, <laughs> Maddie, what's happening? Went through the first sergeant, the SEL, and the commander. Yo, 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 yo. What's good? Yeah, man. So again, yeah, the portal. This portal finna get. It's finna get funky, man. Um. Obviously, we put out a portal list uh, weeks ago, um, and two guys who we had on the list are, are gone already. Um, I can expect 10 more, maybe even 11 more to leave. Um, as of now, we're down to 90, I think 90. I think 90 or 91 players that still leaves us over the scholarship limit. Um, so we still got to get back down to 85. But yeah, it's gonna be some more names to hit. Uh, it is what it is. We spoke about this. Me and Streeter spoke about this years ago, like in 2000, 2001, about how some players will have to go and get pushed out. Some players are gonna to be told, hey, you gotta to go so you can make room. Um, or players are gonna be like, hey, can I get this money? Oh no, all right, well, I'm gonna go to somewhere that's gonna get it. Go give it to me, y'all. That's just what college football is right now. We can't be mad. Uh, we only got to be mad at NCAA for not allowing players to capitalize on making money with the school. Now they're going to find that money, and everybody's upset. I don't know why. That's just crazy.
some somebody asked uh somebody asked how was Chris Johnson looking? Man, Chris Johnson looks good, man. He's the only uh, you know, it's it's you know, if you play a Mario Cristobal offense or team, you gotta be able to block. That's the one issue I'm just you know hoping he can get fixed. But if he's gonna run the ball, I love it. He's going out for passes, I love it. He's too fast. Nobody, not even the DBs can guard him because he's just too damn fast. Well, why the fuck will Mallory ain't never have to block nobody? Anyway, hey, who so who do you think is gonna be the starter <laughs> running back on Saturday? <laughs> well, okay, so it'll be you no know, Chris Johnson or, or Citizen. It'll be either one. You gonna see Hellcat? Huh? Yeah, you, yeah, you're gonna see Hellcat. Definitely. I mean, those are three running backs we got. Chris Johnson, Citizen, Hellcat. That's it. Everybody else the walk-ons, and it, which is why you're seeing um a lot of um Elijah Lofton in the backfield because we just don't have the scholarship running backs out there. And but that 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 running back room went from overcrowded to not so overcrowded real fast. I, li listen, when I always tell y'all, man, you got to keep adding because you never know. You you always one play away from needing somebody else. You know, and uh, running back, just we just haven't been blessed to have running backs last long like that. You know, it's just unfortunately, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Chris Johnson, he's been looking good. Um, they they have a play where they throw, he, he runs out the backfield and he just blows by everybody and he just catches the ball wide open. Um, you know, he's he, yeah, he's his speed is just on a whole nother level. Citizen, he's running hard. Chris Humphrey, he's good. He's looking good. You know, Elijah Lofton, once he get back there, he's just Mr. Mr. Everything. Just put him on the field. It don't matter. Maybe, maybe he can go play linebacker for us, too. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> he's that good. Hey, does Chris John is, is Chris Johnson a, a straight line runner like Brashard was, or does he have does he have wiggle? Does he try to get to the outside or like what, what kind of speed are we talking about? Well, he's he's a player that doesn't get hit. I don't know if you call that a straight line runner or wiggle. he just don't get hit because he's just so once he gets the ball, he finds a way to avoid tackles. Hmm. I'm telling you, man, it's plays. I'm telling you, it was plays when we watched in practice where they threw him screens out the backfield, and it's literally like four players getting ready to tackle him. And let you know he's in the end zone. He like, well, shit, how the hell he do that? Like, he yeah, he just avoids getting tackled. He avoids mm. getting tackled. Hey, what's up, X? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on? Hey, hey, right. right. uh, cool it, man. Uh, do you do you suppose? Uh, I'm not sure if you covered this. Uh, do you suppose they'll be counting on uh Jordan Lyle out the gate? Uh, kind of like how they, you know. Uh, like it, he'll get uh, cares like how Fletcher got cares last year. Uh, absolutely, it. absolutely. I think um, you know Jordan Lyles, his body is already like college ready. Um, you know he came come from St. Thomas. Um, he's he's out there practicing stuff like that. He has the playbook. Um, they're not going to rely on him, but they're going to say, hey, we're going to need you. We're going to need you for a couple of plays here and now. You know what I'm saying? And then if those couple of plays be good. It starts saying, "Well, hey, we're gonna we we gonna need you for at least like eight carries per game." You see what I'm saying? So, uh, it, again, it's gonna be running back by committee. Um, you know, unless we just we get a top running back out the back. I mean, out of the portal, uh, obviously they're gonna use him a lot more. But it's definitely gonna be running back by committee. Hey guys, keep this in mind with running backs now basically leaving after three seasons because they want to get the time service in the NFL and uh, carries are held against them. If your running back can play as a freshman in any role, even if it's special teams, you better get them out there because most, if they're any good, they're not staying for four or five years. That's the reality of it. We, we learned that with Lamar Miller. We redshirted him and we got two years out of him. We probably should have just let him do something as a true freshman way back when. And that's true because he was so fast. It's like, man, why you ain't got the fastest player on the team on the field? X, I'll never forget my buddy Matt. He's a big Hurricane fan. He knows what you said, Steve. If you think Matt Mo Lamar Miller is a future NFL guy, I said, yeah, he is. He said, then what are you doing redshirting him? He's not going to be here for his fourth year, and you saw what happened. He wasn't here for his fourth year. That's just These guys are going to leave and play at running back. That's just the game. Yeah, running, running back is a position, I feel like. Once you get two positions, I feel like, and once you get to college, you can play. Running, running back being one and wide receiver being the second one because – 
I just feel like if you're naturally gifted at those positions, you're supposed to play. Um, running back, yeah, you, they try to get to the league because they know their shelf life is what four, maybe four, five, maybe five years in the NFL. It's like, yeah, you're you're basically you have to be really special or versatile to get that second contract. And the way it is now, if you're Ricky Williams with a hundred thousand miles on the odometer, they hold it against you. If you've got carries for all four years, a lot of them, that's, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's the reality. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it's a lot. You know, they, they just gotta do what they gotta do. Um, it's a, every look running backs around college football are going to find a way to try to get on the field and get out fast. Cause yeah, they just undervalue financially and once you get to the NFL they say that hey, we 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 fit the gear to run it back to the ball so you know um, you go from there but <clears throat> yeah hey, man. Up, man uh what's good what's good chilling, chilling. man what I think about uh citizen you know what he remind me of he remind me of, of a little well about about the same size version of uh Leonard Fournette ah think Leonard about Fournette. that wow um damn because he, he is big. I don't he know is. if he's as big as Fernet. That's because I think Fernet was already like two, two yeah. early when he came out of high school, probably. He's about 220. Yeah, okay. So um I'm not sure they the same as that run. I think Leonard Fernet was just all power, just fast, all power. I don't he didn't have like no he had the footwork. No, no he had the footwork. Way. He had the footwork. And not not as much. Um We'll see, because once Citizen got here, when he first came here, he had, you know, he had everything you needed for a running back. You know, I don't know if the footwork is completely there back. We'll see Saturday. But, yeah, he – Citizen is special if he's healthy. He's, spe he's a special running back, man. Citizen came in with a better lower body development than any running back that we had as a true freshman. I, I remember seeing him. Like, he did not miss leg days. Yeah, like he, he, uh, his body is there, definitely. Somebody said, um, somebody asked, how many receivers are we looking to add from the portal? Just one, just one. You look to add one, um, uh, because you still have one more coming in from for uh, for, for summer for summer class, so you'll add one more. Um, they want a big, big body receiver, big body, big, you know, um, hopefully that we could get the guy that they want. You know, if not, you know, they'll still add somebody. Um, you know, cause Chance Robinson, man, look, I see, he he looks like he's ready to play college football right now. His body, he's already six two, like two twenty. When I say two twenty, I'm talking about muscle. Ain't no fat on him, muscle, all muscle. He's working. He's he's ready. Roy, you got a question for us? Yeah, before you get off the running back, can't Lofton isn't Lofton being used? I hear he's good. Showing out at running back. Yeah, for spring he's he's been using the backfield. Uh, we we just gonna need him right now for spring because we just don't have the scholarship running backs. We only three scholarship running backs for spring, which is crazy. Uh, so yeah, Lofton has definitely been used uh, in the backfield this this spring for us. And something else to point out: we have used the walk-ons before in the spring game for the last few years. So don't be surprised to see some names out there that you may not be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Is Walden Walden's son still out? Walden Absolutely, son? Walden's wow. son. He's getting he's getting a lot of burn during the spring practice. He's getting a lot of burn, so yeah, definitely gonna see yeah. him Saturday. He's he's fat. He's a fast kid too, man. So I, I <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah, yeah. He's very fast and physical. Um, you know, just need opportunity. That's all. Mm -hmm. Somebody said. Um, Somebody said uh, the the mar a, a mar one of the Marshall cornerbacks hopped in the portal. You say you think that's we're gonna kick the tires on that. Well, yeah, let's know. Coach Davis Jackson going to try to get somebody he's more familiar with. Um, I haven't paid attention much to him because I, you know, I haven't seen him much. Um, so I'm, I have to watch his film if anything. But yeah, you know, obviously a coach who coached somebody at a previous school would want somebody to come in to make their job a lot easier. Bro, you had a question for us? Yeah, I was wondering about the secondary. I mean, I came in a little bit late as far as uh, portal guys coming in. I think we need a depth from a secondary standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I spoke earlier about it. I said, you know, we'll need a, a safety and a cornerback uh, to come in and help us um, as far as depth-wise because we just don't have the, the numbers as far as game experience players there. So, yeah, we definitely going to need some help there. Hey, 
X, what you most excited to see this Saturday, man? What position group? Say that again. What position group are you most excited to see? Man, I'm I'm excited about the linebacker group so much. I just I you know, I'm I'm excited about I think those guys are the they they're the hypest guys, they're very hype. Um those guys want to kill somebody. They, they literally want to like knock somebody's head off. Um, and that's you know, I love that. I love that type of football, man. They want to just destroy anybody with the ball in their hand. So I'm excited to see those guys. Um you know, obviously the wide receivers also, you know, um, because they've been looking so good during spring so far. Um, them and Cam have been gelling on you no know, almost every aspect of the pass has been in the air. So it's like, yeah, I'm excited to see those wide receivers in the linebacker group. Yeah, I gotta agree. Um I want to see Popo and, and Bobby out there, man, uh, along with everybody else, but definitely Popo and Bobby. Is Kiko? Um, is he gonna be out there at all? You know, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure he'll be available to play Saturday. Um, he's out there though, but he's not. I'm not sure he'll be available to play Saturday. Has he been dressing at all? Yeah, he, he, he's dressed. Uh, he was dressed last week. He was dressed last week when they just had pads and um, short, helmets and shoulder pads. You know, um, on. But yeah, I I, I doubt he be active for uh, Saturday because Saturday they they yeah. going to go they going to hit Saturday. Malik gonna be playing linebacker. Yeah, Malik playing. He's playing linebacker and he's playing the jack position. I think he's better suited at jack. If Malik is at jack, um, office is gonna have a problem. He's him and Popo. Not Popo. Him and Bobby Washington. I feel like those two guys. If you put him at jack, I don't think anybody could keep them away from the ball, from the quarterback or the ball carrier, because they just attack mode. Mm hmm And they got the speed. Yeah, they got uh, nobody like the tackles are not going to be able to block those guys once they come off the edge. Not 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 at the jack position. Yeah, man. So, um, again, you know, we put a portal list. Obviously, we just lost Najee Kelly. Um, a defensive end that the staff absolutely, absolutely wanted to keep. Um, but it's just unfortunate that things didn't work out the way um, it just didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? He's going to go pursue a career elsewhere. Um, once he's get fully healthy, we expect him to be that top level guy. We, you know, we thought he could be coming in here, which he was before the injury. So, um, you know, so now you lose him, you lose Henry Paris. It's more guys who we got on the list that, that's going to leave. And it's obviously more names that will be added um, after Saturday. Um, and it, it just is what it is. You know, we can't sit and be upset because it's not just Miami. It's the entire college football nation is going to go through the same exact thing. So for us to get up here and cry, just don't do it. It's just college football now. You know what I'm saying? We just got to overlook it. Like, I know before it was just NFL, you said, damn, you don't want to lose this player, but free agency happened. Guess what? College football. You don't want to lose this player, but guess what? Free agency happened. So it is what it is. We got to focus on what we have and what we can get. You know, um, and you go from there, man. It's, it's just a situation where I think uh, NCAA should have handled it a lot better, but they didn't, and we're here now. Yep, we're here. We're going to be here for a long time, but I don't think they got a clue of what the hell they're doing. Oh, listen, listen. April 15th, when April 15 hit, the NCAA is going to call it immediate meeting and try to figure out what can they do because this is something they've never seen before. Each year, I think, okay, so going back to 2019, if I'm not mistaken, 19, or I can just say, go, just I, we can start from 2020. Each year, the portal has grown almost 1,500 players per year. I mean, you know, how do you, how do you even assess that saying you're going to have a college football season? We're talking about the first year. 
2,500 kids. The next year, you're talking about 3,500 to 4,000 kids. Then the next year, you're talking about 5,000. How do you, like, how is, how can you even wake up and say, damn, it's 5,000 5, kids in the portal? Like, I wonder what, like, drastic things they could, like, think of to do. Like, I know somebody said something about um, giving unlimited scholarships. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you stash more kids and keep the portal not so thick. Um, maybe that could be an incentive for staying in school, right? You know how, like, um, in the NBA, you get more money if you stay with your same, you know, team or whatever. You're going to get you're gonna get the super max. What if they could offer something like, say, if you stay at this school, you get a second red shirt. I say that simply because, you know, sometimes kids on the time clock. You get your third year, you ain't playing the shit don't look so good for you. You know what I'm saying? So what if you gave like an extra red shirt for kids that stayed, you know what I'm saying? That that stayed at their program or some shit like that. I, don't I know. actually I think... go, go, ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, actually, I, I just think an idea, you know, most scholarships, I believe, are one year renewables. I, I would start tinkering with the idea if schools want to do it. Make these multi-year agreements. I would also say, you know, when, when kids get pushed out, I think that's unfortunate. The kids that want to stay, that are good citizens, that are working towards their degree. But unfortunately, that is the price of being semi-pro football. But I would actually say, number one, I would limit the amount of times you could transfer. I think being allowed to transfer more than once creates anarchy. I'd also say that if you transfer a second time, since I'm a realist, you have to sit out a year at that point because you don't have to do it now. But to the kids that are getting pushed out, that actually just want to stay and finish out their careers at a certain school, maybe you create a designation where you could still stay at the school. You're still going to be a scholarship athlete, but you may not be on the football roster if you're over numbers. I know these ideas have to be tinkered with, but I think there's a reality that there's kids out there that probably want to stay at that school, finish their degree and get on with their lives. And if they're just kind of being left out there. I, I do feel bad for those young men because not everyone is just kind of out there, you know, putting themselves up for bid. I don't think that's the reality because if you look at statistically, Coach JB talks about it all the time on his show, a large majority of these kids in the portal stay in the portal. They never find another school. Yeah, um, I wish it's look, it's kids in the portal who's sitting there right now trying to figure out who's going to call them. Um, man, I look, I got reached out. Two weeks ago, and kid like, man, X, you you think uh, uh, such and such uh, interested in me? And I'm like, man, look, let me let me reach out. You know what I'm saying to see if they're interested. But I don't I don't know who told you to hit the portal, but you should have thought about this before you did it because you should have you should have had a plan. Um, so yeah, as far as I don't know if they can do anything. The one thing I think they can do uh, is I agree with Steve Kim when he said uh, just. You can't transfer more than once. If you're going to get that one-time transfer, good. The second-time transfer, I think you got to sit out immediately. You can't just come in and say, oh, I'm going to keep transferring because it didn't work at school A, it didn't work at school B, I'm going to go to school C, and maybe it's going to like, no, just go out and sit out, man. Um, it has to be a lesson learned. You're either going to persevere and, 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 and get through it or give up. You know what I'm saying? Because it's high school kids who are trying to get on scholarships. You know what I'm saying? There's other kids trying to get on scholarships. Like, you can't just keep trying to go from school to school to school and think, oh, well, it's all these schools not working. No, it got to be you at that point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what? The three different schools, it's you. I don't know. Ask, I'd, I'd have a couple more ideas. Nothing against Cam McCormick. I don't think anyone should be <laughs> allowed to play college football more than five or six years. No, oh, I really do don't. I, I know there's a whole COVID season and all this other stuff. But short of going on a Mormon mission, like I know BYU had a bunch. But they're, they're literally putting two, three years of their lives away. Let's move along the process. You are holding up high school kids that have their opportunity. By year five or six, you should have your degree and ready to go on to the next stage of your life. You know, um, I had another idea. I think there's ways you can do this. But also, I'd also put in a rule so that kids cannot leverage their beloved school that they they that they said they're so loyal to. If you're going to put yourself into the portal just for the whole notion of leveraging your value and getting more NIL money, I'd make up a rule that if you want to put your name into the portal, you're not allowed to go back to your old school. If you really want to leave, leave. Bye. Shut the door. 
make that a rule. Um, yeah, I, I think, think that's a good one. I think programs have a right to say, hey, guys, we don't have we shouldn't have to re-recruit 70 kids every year. It's ridiculous. So if you're going to pull something like they're saying Bear Alexander put rumors out there to leverage USC as second school. I just would have said, fine, just leave USC, get the best deal wherever you can. Once you go into the portal uh, willingly, that school that you just left, that door's closed. Yeah, that, that, that definitely sounds interesting. Um uh... It, it's it's a lot going on. Um, I think a lot a lot of the focus is basically trying to figure out what's going to happen with this conference realignment stuff. Um, they trying to figure out this portal thing. All like everything is hitting them, and they just trying to figure out what are we doing? What can we do to to kind of get the control back? Um, yeah. The, the problem is it's the wild wild west right now, and and the, the milk's been spilled already, so they're not getting it back in the bottle. You know. And and, and, and I'm gonna tell you the happen. crazy thing is mm -hmm. you know now, um. So you know they they just moved the uh, signing period up uh, to January, not January, to, to December seventh, which is the first week of December. Um, they doing that. It, look, it's kids I talked to so much the last month or so, and they said, "Damn, ex, I got to commit and try to get in school because once the portal hit, these coaches are literally calling them saying, man, we know we don't have no scholarship for y'all no more.'" Yeah. It's it's we, crazy. We saw man. this though. We saw this. Coming. Yeah, we said yeah, it. Man. We said it. Like, boy, you, you're gonna get left out. So if you find a school, commit, and stick with it. Because guess what? One sign they come, you might not get that letter of intent sent to you. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. said it for years. Yep. G nasty, you got a question for us? Yeah, what's good, X Kevin? What's good, everybody? <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, what's y'all – give me a fair assessment of our, our quarterback room. We know about Cam Ward. We know about how he looks. We already know he QB1. Now, give me y'all fair assessment of the breakdown from two to four. So you you, you want you want, you want want my my, the, my truthful assessment or you want me to give you the, the – No, I want the real. I don't want no political <laughs> – I, I want the – I want the um, – yeah, <clears throat> uncut oh, throat. Okay, so my, my uncut throat assessment about the quarterback room um, – yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna speak on Cam because Cam is I don't care what quarterback we had this year, Cam is that guy. Um as far as one, two, and three, you have Reese, you have Emory, you have Jakari. Um I obviously I won't speak on uh Judd, he's there, but not gonna speak on him much. Um I and I, this is my truthful assessment. I don't think either quarterback that's backing up is a pet of each other. I think they all the same. Um, they all do things better than the other in what they do. Reese, he he's he's a gamer. He knows how to play football. Jakari, he can make plays with his feet. Emery, he's a leader. I think they all have their own ability to control the offense, but neither three are Sticking out better than the other. And that's me. I'm not speaking with, with any other media saying, I'm just telling you from what I've seen. I think all three are the same. Um, with with that said, Jakari has improved his accuracy somewhat in his ability to put touch on the ball. So he does look improved from what we've seen. Yeah, yeah. He's look, he looked way better this year than he's looked the, the previous past season. Um you know, uh, but you know, it's been rumors that everybody's saying, "Oh, well, Reese is automatically quarterback too." Um, I, from what I've seen, I don't know why he would be quarterback too because he didn't show himself to be quarterback too. That's me giving my truthful. I'm thinking whoever plays the best Saturdays should be quarterback too, and that's just it. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen Reese outplay Jacory. I didn't see Reese outplay Emory. Um. Emory is the one I feel like he's, if anything, here before because he's just not ready just yet. Coming back from the injury, and he still look like he's kind of trying to get back to it. I think Jacory and Reese are the two battles for the backup. And I think just from my perspective, I've seen Jacory do some good things. I've seen Reese do some good things. So, again, I think Saturday – I think you give Cam a, you know, give Cam probably a quarter 
and let Reese and Jakari battle it out to see who's going to win number two. And and to that point, this is Jakari's second year in this program, right? He he has an advantage over Reese in that capacity. Um, he should have a better hold of what this offense is. Um, so I would probably give him an edge on that because he had all of last year to sit in there and, and you know, get all of the lingo and, and you know, just the playbook in, in itself. Um, but Reese may come in and close that gap. But again, I still think that Jakari would have an edge from that perspective. And the fact that he's playing better, um, it bodes well for him. You know the one thing the one thing I can say about Reese. So X. So go ahead, go ahead, Jay. So JB he is my guy. Y'all know I like JB. Now he he now he has improved, right? His his the his his throwing everything. But on Saturday in the Saturday uh, scrimmage, not the not the one on ones, not the seven on seven in the scrimmage, right? I'm saying Reese was the only quarterback that was that was able to move that was able to move the ball down to the one yard line now reese is a smaller guy right but the boy can play bro so me i i i just think reese is 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 is, is, is a little bit ahead of jacory now emory is the fourth quarterback hands down he, he hasn't looked good in either scrimmage I, I don't know if he he rushed himself back or whatever but um I just think it's a, it's a it's a battle. I know everybody is going crazy over this and just making it a whole a, a whole big deal. I'm saying Jacory is not not the fourth string quarterback. I just wish people would stop saying that. And the kid has improved. Man, he he he's doing his his job. You know, he's trying to fight for the position. And we just got to sit back and 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 and, and let this shit take its course. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, just like I said, I think Reese is a Reese is a gamer. He's just one of those guys. Yes, no, no, he, not, hey, he is a gamer. In, I, I got to give it to him. Yeah, you put him in. You put him in, and he's just gonna play football. He uh, he don't. You know, one thing about a quarterback is you gotta have the. You know, when they say forgive and forget, you gotta have that forgive and forget thing. You, uh, you make a mistake, you can't go into the next day thinking about that. You gotta just forget about it. Um, Reese, he has that. He 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 don't care. He's going in there to just play football. Like he don't care if he made a mistake. He's just going in there to play football. Jakari has to get that. He has to understand that that you can't think about the the bad plays. You got to always think about the good plays. Because guess what? The good plays is going to lead you to being successful. You know. Um, hey, listen, man. One thing about and Jakari and and the scrimmage and practice or whatever, bro. I don't give a damn who throw a, a touchdown. If it's if it's him, is if it's another quarterback, bro. He 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 the first one to go down and celebrate, bro. His attitude yeah. has been has been awesome. I, you know, I understand people. Oh, he you know, he might leave. And I don't know. He might. He might not. I don't want the kid to leave. But the but the kid has a great attitude. You know what I'm saying? I I don't never see the kid with his with his head down. Never see him moping or or no shit like that. You know, but um. Bro, Saturday, well, I, to me, I I think last Saturday was the real scrimmage. You know what I'm saying? I I, I just think like a lot of shit will probably be held back on Saturday that that wasn't held back on on last Saturday. Like the the linebackers went crazy last Saturday. Like 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 Chase Smith hit, hit Citizen so fucking hard. Like it was just like they it, it was physical. The whole the, the the whole scrimmage was just which is a physical scrimmage. So we'll see on Saturday. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, look, I'm with you, man. I uh I know this Saturday, like I, I told you, I said, man, look, he, Mario going, he's gonna be like, man, look, I'm giving the offense this amount of plays the script, defense, this amount of plays the script. Everything else, you just gonna go with the flow, you know. Uh, cause they're not gonna anything you see Saturday, trust me, we 95% chances will not see during the season. So hey guys. Think, uh, I, I wouldn't even – I'd even think about limiting Cam, uh, Cam to, like, 10 snaps. We know what we have. and Put him in the Pope Mobile. Don't even risk it. And to Jay's point, if there is a real battle for number two, I think the rest of those snaps need to go to Jakari and to Reese. And to your point, Jay, the, the thing is when you have a backup quarterback, that number two has to be really, really close to replicating the number one. Because you're trying to run a certain system, a certain set of plays, 
And if it's too much of a contrast, that becomes an issue. And and the one thing I like Riley, I, I do. Um, problem is he's very limited athletically, which limits the whole offense. You saw what happened last year. There's there was no threat at the mesh point. But the one thing that concerns me about Jakari, as Barry Switzer said, when the band's still playing, can he consistently hit intermediate mid-range passes that you need in any type of air raid system? That means a deep comeback, the dig, the square out stuff of that nature i thought he showed flashes in the bowl game i don't think we really helped him out with that offense we ran i think he'd be better off in a tempo system that lets him run around a little bit but reese to me seems to me more like a facsimile of cam ward to be honest with you from what i've seen than jakari yeah you're absolutely right there right right with that one cam oh steve cam um we'll see we'll see uh it's 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 a lot you know I don't be paying attention to the to the chat and stuff like that, man. Like you said, Jay, man, Jakari is the first guy to he's he's celebrating with everybody on the team. You know what I'm saying? He's celebrating with everybody. He's always happy, um, and that's just who he is. You know what I'm saying? He's he's battling it out. He's trying to win his uh, backup job. Um, and we'll see how it goes Saturday. Um. And guess what? He's not the only one trying to win a backup job. It's a lot. It's a lot of kids that's trying to win that backup job um, Saturday. And we'll, we'll see how it goes Saturday, man. It's, it's just, you know, it's just college football. You know, um, sometimes, man, you, you got it and sometimes you don't. That's just it, what it is. Um, again, you know, you know, for the villains, you got the list. We put it out. Um yeah, it's probably going to be more names added, if anything, after this week. I mean, after Saturday, but we'll see. We'll see, man. Um, uh, what else we got? Recruiting. Um, oh man, recruiting. You know, we, we just had like two big, huge weeks in Miami. Um, Miami making some big, major moves recruiting wise, as far as D line. You know, Coach Jason Taylor, he's doing his thing. Um, I think a lot of you guys go ahead and um start. Telling Coach Joe, sending Coach Joe your apologies because the man is out there mm-hmm. recruiting. <laughs> He's sending Coach him. Joe your apologies. The man is recruiting. He is recruiting people. He's not only recruiting the defensive line. He's recruiting. He's got an offensive lineman, uh, another um, tight end. Man, he's recruiting. You know, so, what's up, man? What what choice do we have? You got the AC, the best recruiter in the conference. Probably in the country, in the same room with you. He's kind of, I think, I guess we could argue, pushed you off to the side and kind of taken over that room. Like, what other choice do you have? Like, hey, but Manny, Manny, Manny. So let me ask you this, because okay, so we we automatically give Jason Taylor the best recruiter. Um, and granted, oh, he, 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 he's won it. He's won it last year. But do we? I mean, like. We forget Coach Kevin Beard right now. Like we forget Coach KKB. He's been getting us top guys since even before he was here with Murray. Like when he was here with um with, with, with what he was with, he was with Al Golden. He got remember yeah, he got Gordon. us those three. He got us Amar Richards and Sam Bruce and um Deontay yeah, Mullen. You know he got us those guys. You know what I'm saying? So he's That's been the, the top recruiter at Miami. Yeah, I'm um, not taking that away from him. I think I think obviously. The the, the, pro, the the big fish in that pond was obviously Jeremiah. And I think maybe take a side for that. I'm not taking that away from KB. I'm talking about the best D line class in America. They're giving that the media is giving that Jason Taylor, not me. I I I think Jason Taylor is talented, but I'm talking about that's a that's a two four seven award. And so I'm saying when you got that prowess in the ring with you for a guy who hasn't been doing college football recruiting for very long, like Joe Savage had been doing this already. So, yeah, he, I think they gave him credit for the mile noise, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. But, yeah, like, you kind of got to step in and you your game. Meddy, you got to keep in mind, you got Mario there, right? It was there before Jason was on staff uh-huh. saying that defensive line was going to be the focal point like offensive line was the year prior, right? For sure. Mm-hmm. So, all along, the talk was, the discussion was Miami is out to sign the best D line class in the nation, right? And for a little while, it got shaky. Shit wasn't looking right, but it ended up being, you know, either the best or at at the top of the best 
um, at the end of the day, right? So you, mm-hmm. you don't only have Jason. Yes, he gets the credit, and deservedly so, but it is a team effort. Like the staff recruits. It's not just you go out and you recruit your position. I've been saying this to people for years, and they just don't be listening when I say it. Um, nobody is out there on an island on their own just recruiting people. You understand? Like, no, like yeah, there's, there's credit that goes – there's credit that goes to Joe for the guys that landed with with JT. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. Um, and at the end of I'm the not, day, I'm, though, can he, can he coach him up? Th- that's what really needs to be seen. Is your position group going to show up? Yeah, and I'm not arguing your point. I'm saying that that is a 247. When they sit there and say Fran Brown is the best recruiter, you know, or the best recruiter in America for defensive backs at Georgia, like, mm-hmm. they, made, they made it essentially personal where it's like oh this guy's got to get credit when you see those recruit they'll have those little signs that it says recruited by so-and-so primary like it is a team effort in theory yes it is and i and i agree with that what i'm saying is two four seven makes that so with that which i put an asterisk by right but with that being put out by the media some people gravitating towards it everybody talks about brian hartline right can Brian Hartline go to another school and still have the same caliber of success that he did at Ohio State? But then that would then beg the question, is it the coaching staff? Is it the school and the prowess? Or is it Brian Hartline, right? Um, right. KB, we see KB go to a lesser school and develop monsters there. We've seen it. We've seen it in Miami before. But the way my issue that I have is that the way the media pushes it is that while it is a team effort, they make it seem like it's a primary and an ultimate recruiter. And then those individuals get all the credit and they put them on those little scales. And then that makes them more visible because now we know people are beating down Jason Taylor's door like, hey, you need you out of school. Right? So I agree with what you're saying. It is a team effort. I'm just saying with Joe Salaveo, because the way the media at 247 portrays it, he has to elevate to give, I guess, that media outlet the warm and fuzzy that he's handling his business on the recruitment trail. That's all I'm saying. I look at it a little differently, and I say this. The, the media has a job to do, and they have an angle they need to push so that they can get the clicks that pay the bills, right? For sure. I think Mario is comfortable with Joe. You, you can see evidence of that by him, you know, work, working with him for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think that there's any, like, jeopardy for Joe within the program. That's just outside noise, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Well, no, the only the only outside noise coming with Joe would be him leaving to go to, to get an NFL job, and I'm I'm not sure he wants to do that. Uh, but I will say, as far as around college football, yes, college football and NFL, um, those guys both have came calling for Jason Taylor, and Jason Taylor stick it out with Miami. Um, it's, it's college football teams coming for Coach D. Nicholas. Guess what? He's sticking it out with Miami as of now. Um, Coach KB, we don't have to worry about, I guess, he, he's a Miami guy. He wants to be in Miami, so we don't have to really worry about that. Um, You know, so, yeah, I think, you know, in all in all, yeah, we give Jason Taylor the credit. Rightfully so. He did go out there and get get us the top defensive line class. Um. But yeah, we got some damn good recruiters. Coach Coach D. Nick is a hell of a fucking recruiter. Like he is getting us the linebackers that we need. You know what I'm saying? And not just that, he's helping with the rest of the class because of who he is, the type of coach he is. He's a very exciting coach. Um, Jay Jay Jay, he he speaks in the spaces a lot. Jay probably could tell you how exciting just watching Coach D. Nicholas is out there because he's just so motivational, you know, as, as far as how he teach you and how he coaches the game. You know, KB the same way. Um, Coach Coach Mirabon, he's another one, the top recruiter. Um, he, I don't think he get as much credit as we think because we just say, well, Mario is there helping him. But, you know, all the offensive linemen just love Coach Mirabon. They give him the credit. They give him probably the same amount of credit they give Coach Mario. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, uh, we have some – Two big weekends recruiting wise, man. Um, some top linebackers, Zayden Walker. Um, he's a kid from Georgia who's very, very, very close to almost thinking about Miami. Um, 
you know, DJ Pickett, that's another kid I keep telling y'all. That's a Miami lock. Um, Amari Wallace, uh, Bryce uh, Fitzgerald, he's the, the, the kid that's Columbus. Yeah, Columbus. Um, Chris Ewald, another cornerback from Chaminade. Um, yeah, Miami, man, they's been, they've been been doing some heavy, heavy, heavy recruiting. And granted, Mario used these Under Armour camps and rivals camps to get these kids on campus, and it's working. That's brilliant. Like, it's very brilliant for them to use those camps to bring these kids on campus, man. Um, again, somebody asked me that today. They were saying, um, X, you think we're going to go after a second quarterback or get another quarterback instead of Luke? I'm not sure you guys – look, you want to keep Luke in his class because Luke is damn good. Damn good. I, mean, look, I, I don't care about his ratings. His ratings don't mean nothing to me. That kid is damn good. Yeah. I know he looked good in 707. He, Cam, look, the, Cam the Newton not a game had. changer. He said he's not a game changer yet. <laughs> okay, so I want I want to ask Cam like what what does that mean because <laughs> if you look at his junior season, I'm trying to see where isn't he changing the game cuz he <laughs> made that team good. Can't they were a game manager. <laughs> Our national champions this year had a game manager. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I mean, I'm that's not the truth. <laughs> JJ? Yeah, I mean, McCarthy might be the fifth pick in the draft, but if you look at him, they they had to manage the game. I mean, I saw a game, we all did, against Penn State. His last 37 plays, he handed the ball off. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I covered him at IMG, um, Kim. He's, he's, he's very talented. You, you just said it correctly. The way they used him, yeah, they didn't, they, yeah, they didn't, they didn't utilize him, <laughs> they didn't utilize him at, at all. But he's very talented. Um, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they decided that run will be first, and that, and that's how they, how they did it. But I, when I covered him at IMG, bro, he's one of the better, he's one of the better quarterbacks I've seen at IMG. Him and Kelly Mon, uh, were, were two of the top quarterbacks I saw at IMG. Man, he's he could run, he could throw it. Watch, man. I think he's going to be successful in the NFL, bro. Yeah, he's the biggest question in this draft because the, the tape does not, like, stand out to you. But the people that really know football seem to like him. So, yeah, like, what if he starts getting weapons and they're wanting four wide empty all of a sudden? You know, they didn't really run that at Michigan. They so. didn't run it at Michigan. So, people, yeah, people don't think he could do it, but he could, he could sling that ball. But, X, check this out. X, I see Henry Paris just posted videos of him working out, right? On Instagram, has, yeah, Henry Paris hasn't been picked up yet. Well, they can't they can't be picked up until the portal actually opens. They can't okay, be picked so they, up. They can only oh, answer. So, okay, fine. Because somebody they, just texted me, Henry Paris ain't been picked up yet. I'm like, what? But yeah, yeah you no, right. they, the portal, well, they had put a prediction they, you know, on him going. The they had, uh, uh, Streeter, they had put a prediction on him going back to Ole Miss. And I know. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, he's basically going to go back to Ole Miss once it opens. He'll be he'll go back to Ole Miss. Um. Yeah, but yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't choose your school just yet. You gotta wait till the portal opens. Uh, that goes for us and everybody else. Like, yeah, somebody just tell me. Swag, what? you got a question for us? No, nah, I was gonna say, um, y'all gonna say what y'all want to say about Luke? That boy walked them boys to that night, the uh, Georgia championship. Yeah, and, and it so, wasn't, so, it so, wasn't so, no game management. That was so, he, it, he did it, that. Yeah, so he beat the hell um, too. The the quarterback you you went you went to Georgia and covered not not um the quarterback they have this year the one they had the the, the other year when they won the championship I forget his name uh, the walk on guy what was the quarterback name who was Spencer. at Georgia that one Spencer that's him at, at Georgia now no 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 not now uh, he was at Georgia when they won the back to back championship Bennett right that's yes, Bennett yeah him he wasn't no game I mean he wasn't no no outstanding quarterback. He's a game manager. Like he just did what they wanted him to do and won the football game. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think, I, mean, I think part of playing quarterback is not making mistakes. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. All you gotta do is go not out there and not the make game mistakes. Away. But you gotta always trade Dilfer. Yeah, well, you, you gotta always that can block for in you. some situations though too. Um, so in certain big in moments when it was time for him to make a play, whether it was on the in the air on his on the ground on his feet. I think he showed that. That dude is a gamer, man. I don't, go, I don't care what nobody say. That dude is a gamer, man. He, I watched that game, that state championship game, 
He put that team on his back. Man. I think he had I think, like five I think, I think what you get, I think what you get in college football is you get you get people saying, "Well, we, you want the Johnny Mizzell, the Lamar Jacksons, you want um, the C.J. Strouds, the quarterbacks who just going out there and making it look so easy, effortless out there." And, you know, it's like, okay, well, damn, if you don't have this type of quarterback, your team ain't gonna be successful. I think this is what college football wants, but you're not gonna always get that. You're gonna get the the quarterback from Michigan who can just say, "Well, man, I don't need to do all this. I got a good team. I can hand the ball off." And I can make the throw when I need to make the throw. That's all you need to be successful. I mean, we as college football fans want a certain style of quarterback play. But if again, if, if the quarterback play that Miami had last year goes out there and don't make those mistakes, nobody's complaining. And guess what? Miami wins games. But mm -hmm. since he goes out there and make those mistakes, we complain. Miami lose games. It's like, shit, boy, we don't want that type of quarterback no more. Our last national championship was won by a game manager. That's what Kim just said, uh huh? Oh, you said uh, Miami's own. Yeah. Miami Ken Dorsey. Miami, yes. Ken, Ken Dorsey. Exactly. The greatest, the epitome, the greatest game manager ever, huh? Him and Steve Walsh, two best game managers I've seen at Miami. Yeah, Kim, I was just about to say, kids, uh, so Steve Watts, I think he was like, he, both him and Ken Dorsey was just surrounded by so much talent. All he had to do was go out there and just say, hey, I'm going to turn around and get this thing to Clinton Portis. And Andre Johnson might be streaking down the field or Jeremy Shockey might be streaking in the middle of the field. And we good. I ain't got to worry about nobody sacking me because Brian McKinney, he, he got me on the left side. We good. Airy going to pick off 30 interceptions and Run ten of them back. I'm good. <laughs> Just don't mess up. <laughs> Nick Saban won six national championships since 2009. Yep. How many of them quarterbacks was game managers? The McCarron, McElroy. McCarron. Yep. <laughs> and we're certain McCarron's in the UFL. I watched him this weekend. He actually played decent. Yeah. Um, Two was just a guy. I mean, I don't want to offend any Dolphin fan, but he has his limitations. Uh, Jalen Hurts. Good pro, but he has his limitations. So yeah, I, I look, you you can win without dominant quarterback play, but you can't win it with bad one. We found that out last October. The one thing each of them had was dominant running backs, though. No, they, they did. Running back. <laughs> yeah, they Rich, had dominant running backs. They Derek dominant, Henry, dominant team. They had a dominant team. You got to be dominant at all aspects of the football game. You got to be good offensively, defensively, special teams, coaching. You got to have all those aspects to be a good football team. Miami, we're trying to get that. We're trying to get to that level where we have a dominant offense, a dominant defense, special teams, and, a, and, and the coaching is good. You know, so now nah, we'll you say the, the last game, probably Kim? four years. No, I'll be watching on uh, ACCX. <laughs> <laughs> you got boxing matches to watch four. too, so. <laughs> The last four years, our special teams have been good. Four or five years, we haven't had any real issues there, and I've actually seen it get better in terms of like punt coverage, kickoff coverage, return games gotten stronger. You know, well, like Kappa, that's the that's the that's the one thing I want to see a lot better. I feel like we we should we should be doing a whole lot better as far as kick return and punt return. Um, I mean, I, we, I guess we've improved. I guess we, with us being less with having Roscoe Paris, Devin Hester. Philip Buchanan, Kevin Smith, Santana Moss, having those type of Duke. guys, yep. Duke, you know what I'm saying? Having those type of guys, you looking and saying, well, damn, man, why we can't have at least two, three, four return punts or kicks per year? It's it's, it's like, Listen, damn. If anybody's listened to me long enough, you know I've been bitching about that for the longest, right? Because special teams is an integral part of the of the game, and you need to win two of the three phases in order to win a game. And oftentimes we overlook that phase of the game. You know, in the last 10, 15 years, it, it really hadn't been a priority. And, uh, you know, it's frustrating, but I've seen the change in the last few years. It's trending in the right direction. Um, and I'd like to see that continue. That's why I say I, I like seeing guys like Bobby and Popo out there on special teams because they're, they're fast, you know, they're smart, they're intuitive, they want to hit. You know, I, I'd love to see – you know, somebody other than X back there returning kicks. I don't think he got the top end speed that we'd like at that in that role. 
uh, but he is fairly consistent hand wise. He reminds me a lot of like Braxton, you know, um, doesn't make very many mistakes. And I'll take that over a guy being quick and fucking around and fumbling because he's trying to do too much. You know what I'm saying? No doubt about that. But that's, yeah, we, we can't have those fumbles. Those fumbles cost the games, man. But uh, yeah, man. So we hear Speedo, um, you know, it's been a lot of rumbling on social media over the last couple of days, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. Um, we put the list out of guys getting, you know, we think that was going to hit the portal. Um, and I gave y'all this list like, what, a month ago? You know what I'm saying? And I guess since names are starting to hit the portal, now it's starting to be a bunch of craziness going on on social media only, only on social media because nobody <laughs> is addressing it personally, obviously. Nobody really knows, but what what's 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 all this chatter going on? What's what's that I mean, about? the list that I say so we put a list out for the villains. Um and I guess we're gonna have to update it. We put a list out for the villains, and with the list, when we put it out behind the pay behind the paywall, um is a, a write-up that goes with it, and it kind of explains how we're projecting what we think, why we think X is kind of the brains behind it. Then we sit down, we look at it, we'd be like, Oh, this guy didn't go off. Oh no, nah, we don't think he should be on there. But we're kind of just projecting as looking at numbers and looking at guys getting passed up, like who will hit the portal. It's kind of like a projection. Uh, no different than Mel Kuyper projecting who's going to get drafted. No different than Steve Kim projecting who's going to get knocked out this weekend. Um, but when you take the list from behind the villains and then you start shop mm -hmm. texting it to people, because I got three people, <laughs> they, they hit me up like, hey, man, I got this list. What this list about is interpreted different. Once you get it in front of your face, and it's and and you can you're gonna interpret it how you want to interpret it, but you got to think it was it was stolen. Is it stolen, Capo? It was, is yeah, it, it was. It was liberated. <laughs> it was thieved it, it, it and lifted, yeah. and now you don't really know what you're looking at. Um, and I think yeah, it's important I mean, they the don't they just, don't include the context with it though. That's, right, that's part of the real problem because beyond just having a list, there's like a write up on you know how the, that came about. And right. when you don't share that context, you know, it it, bec it becomes fuzzy. And that's where people, you know, start to, I guess, get in their feelings about certain players being on that list. Right, right. And, and I see I could probably rub somebody wrong. I mean, I mean, I guess if if your child name is on there uh, or something like that, I, I can kind of see how maybe it, you could rub it, it could rub somebody wrong. Um, but but yeah, it's just it's just a projection. And um, and then when it started coming true, and what could you say? I mean, it's a business. You know, it's a business. We don't go up here and just make up shit. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, 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 it's 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 not about feelings and emotions, man. Look, because at the end of the day, um, a lot of the kids we do know personally. You know what I'm saying? So when it happens, obviously we'll feel a, a certain way before anybody at first. But we do understand the, the nature of college football. Man Street have been preaching this since 2021. Literally, he just they just we just posted a video of me and him sitting down talking trying to figure about out, yeah, trying exactly, to figure out what the transfer portal was. <laughs> you know, so we we posted about exactly what's about to happen, and it's happening. It's happening. So now yeah. um again, yeah, we when we made the list. You know, I, I, I put names on there and then I put asterisks by certain names I felt that could stay or could leave. And then we gave reasons about why. So when it come out, I guess people feel a certain I mean, I don't care if you feel a certain way. Who cares? Whatever. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like in, quick. Yeah, in the end of the day, hold on, hold on. But end of the oh, day, man, man um, you know, the, the players got to do what's best for them and the team got to do what's best for them. That's just what it is. Go ahead. Okay, so the list, I was looking at the list, and we, we all seen the list, and then, like I said, it got the fan base in uproar. You got Jakari Brown on the list, okay? Then when we think about when you posted the, the tweet about the bad dream and all that other stuff, it had people also in the in the uproar because it's like you have this concern and you have a personal relationship with Jakari Brown, but you also got this kid on the, on, on the transfer portal. So it leaves people wondering, like, what's what's the reason why would you have them on the transfer portal list? Like, what's the motive behind oh. that? 
Well, okay, so if you, if you got the list, we got the list from us, you see his name has an asterisk by it, right? Right. Right. Okay, so it was always a, uh, it's possible that he can hit the portal because you have Cam Ward this year, next year you have Reese, and you still have Emory. One of those quarterbacks is going to say, I got to leave while I got the opportunity. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's either going to be Emory or Jakari. Right. So, right. Emory and Emory on too. Uh, yeah, the list, was made before, the list was made before that tweet even came about. Yeah, well, correct, man. correct, correct. Right, right. So, I mean, so people pay attention to what they want to pay attention to. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically X just did the numbers. <laughs> Dog, if y'all think about it, we have two transfers in at quarterback. Mm -hmm. One is one, and the second one may be two. You got two transfer quarterbacks in front of two guys that was here already. Five years ago, that would have looked like death to the quarterbacks that are here already, right? But, mm -hmm. but, it looks, but because of the transfer portal, we ain't thinking of it that way. But you got two transfers in here that may be one and two on the depth chart. That's wild. But you also yeah. got a situation where you probably gonna take another transfer quarterback <laughs> in the spring. Y'all need to y'all need to wake up and, and X and Street trended that month based on what was happening, and it's it's not a surprise that his name's not on that list. I was gonna ask that question. Right. Y'all see us get I, I, you you if Cam kills it this year, and you see a prolific offense. Don't be surprised if we in the portal shopping again for another quarterback. I know. Hey, listen, listen. You got to get um, the right one, though. <laughs> listen, it's look, look. If if you into if you into the uh, business of winning football games, um, quarterback is going to be the one position. I say I don't think you have to recruit that good in high school because you could get one out the portal. You know what I'm saying? So if you're in the tradition of winning football games. The transfer portal quarterback position is going to be the one main position that you're going to say, "Hey, let's tap into that. Let's tap into that right there." Um, that, you, that you should invest in. Cal, you was going to say something? No, I was going to say y'all just see how 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 context makes shit so easy, right? You know what I'm saying? Like that's all that's all it is. Is like you can ask them, you can just ask a goddamn question, and, con and somebody <laughs> will tell you. Well, common sense. Hey, look, both of the quarterbacks got asked by their names. So we just saying we just doing the numbers like it's too many guys in the quarterback room that can play college football at this level. You know what I'm saying? But it's like we can't, you know, people screenshot stuff and you take stuff and run stuff and all that stuff. And sometimes it's just context, man. It's just a simple question. Right. Right. Now, I mean, now, now, as far as the tweets about JB, I mean, it's 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 simple. I mean, um, I think Ja'Cory Brown is 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 a talent that we haven't had at the quarterback position in a while. Um, I, 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 he's, he's big, he's fast. Uh, he's worked really hard on being able to throw the ball. And we watched him be the only quarterback that we had for this, for the bowl game. We watched him not do what everybody else thought he was going to do transfer. He didn't transfer. He, he stayed here without taking a snap this season. And then he went on that field with, uh, not the real O-line, not all the wide receivers, not, and he, and he played. A game for the Hurricanes, and and he almost he almost won it. He didn't want it. He lost it, but he was the only quarterback we had. So at that point, at that point, literally, he was the starter, probably with a quarterback going to be brought in here, like an older quarterback would be brought in here. But he was the starter. Emory was coming off a, a, a injury, um, and they were going to bring somebody in here to compete with him. So now he's sitting here. He's the starter. And wait for somebody to come compete with him. And then God gives us Cam Ward. Okay, fine. We all happy about that. <laughs> we all happy about getting Cam Ward. But when spring starts, it looks like he's third, he's fourth. Uh guys are in front of him. And I think Jacory is a talent that that we haven't seen in, in a while. But that's my own personal personal opinion. So I tweet about it and I just asked everybody. Hey, listen, okay, so if Jacory is fourth, if Cam Ward was to get nicked up and go down, y'all good with the quarterbacks that we have in the room? And I asked the question, and I'm looking at the thing now, the thing got 54,000 impressions, oh, 100 between both of the tweets, uh, and everybody went apeshit. I want people to understand this. 
I had never said anything about race in any one of those tweets. I think that's kind of low hanging fruit. <laughs> I think that's kind of the easy escape goat to talk about race. We're talking about talent. And I believe that he's the second best quarterback on the team. I believe that he was going to lead us uh, to a playoff. I said this from day one because I know what it looked like. I know what it looked like because I've been covering these kids firsthand for a long time, editing their videos, watching them play. I watched them grow up. Like, I know what it looks like, and I'm going to stand on that. I don't need ESPN. It's the same thing I told y'all with James Williams before he had that good year last year. I don't need ESPN to tell me who these kids are. I don't. Not the ones I know. I've been watching them my, my whole life. You know what I'm saying? I don't need ESPN to stamp a kid. I don't need 247 to stamp a kid. I don't need On3 to stamp a kid for me to think he's somebody. I know I know what I'm looking at. So I just I just was posing the question of, one, how did he become fourth without a competition? And are y'all good with the backups? Now, when it, when it comes to media and people questioning us, listen, bro, I started this a long time ago, not knowing what I was doing. X came on a little later because you see, he's like a, a hurricane super fan and he knew so much about the Canes. And I knew X since he was eight years old, man, running around in Pampers or some shit. Um, but, <laughs> I, I, but I, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say running around in Pampers at eight years old. Boy. Eight, eight years old. I started this a long yeah, time ago. Right. <laughs> and I was working full time as a CEO. And Something told me to leave and put all my effort into something that I built or I would have a lot of regret. So I did it. So when I got credential with the Canes, I didn't know what I was doing. A lot of times I would feel uncomfortable in the room with them. I would feel uncomfortable in the room with Susan and these people because I didn't I didn't know if I was supposed to be there. I felt very uncomfortable for a long time. And then a conversation happened one day. Um, a conversation happened. It was kind of about kids being uh, not wanting to interview, and I told one of the one of the guys from one of the big media, from the, one of the, the the bigger platforms, hey, maybe if you taught the kid, if you teach him what's important about interviewing and how it could help build his brand, blah blah blah, maybe they'll be more comfortable with interviewing with you. And they looked at me and they say, man, that's not my job. It's not my job. Like I'm not here to teach kids nothing. Um. And I, I and I shut up. I, I sat back and I shut up and I realized in that moment, I realized what I had that a lot of these bigger companies didn't have is that I was from the fabric. I was from the community. I I knew Josiah Trader when he was nine years old. I knew Jeremiah Smith when he was nine years old. I just had lunch with Jeremiah Smith. I knew Popo when he was 12. I'm, I'm from the fabric. And I was I realized I was sitting in the resource that that these bigger companies are trying to get in. They have the resources and they have all the guys across the nation, but they want to be able to get in, get into the community to be able to talk to these kids, make these kids comfortable and things of that nature. But I realized I was a part of it and I had the relationships already. And it took me a long time to realize that. I could pick up the phone and call most of their parents. I grew up playing basketball with Bain Dad. With, uh, Natalie Kelly mom texted me the other day. She pissed her son was on the list and I could just pick up the phone and call her. I know I could just pick up the phone and call her. So when we start talking about credible sources and credible media companies, right? I don't think it can get more credible than us. We don't have to check our sources because we are, we are from the fabric of the source. And I never stood up and really said this, um, but I'm realizing that, yeah, it, 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 it's a new day. We are from it. We know these people. We know these kids. That's why they look different and sound different when we sit down and talk to them. They're comfortable. They trust us. <laughs> that's why That's why it sounds different. So so if we do say something that seems out of bounds or it, it, it gets you, it, it, it makes you feel uncomfortable, I think you, you, you ought to stop for a minute and, and think about what we're saying because we don't say many uncomfortable things, do we, X? No, nah, we don't. We um, don't, but we know every fucking thing. That, I mean, you just said it. We literally know these people, like literally, like personally, family members and stuff like that. Uh, so we look at it a lot different than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So that's why even today people was asking me, oh, you're going to speak about the Najali Kelly? And I say, no. I say um, his mom or him. 
can speak about it. I'm not gonna speak about it. That's for them to speak about. Right, right, because, because, yeah, because dog, listen, uh, we're from the fabric. All we ever did was protect the kids. You know how many kids came on our podcast and started saying, "My nigga, this, my nigga, that." Y'all ain't never heard that. We had one of Kane's stars come on our podcast, told us he tore his ACL in the state championship. We stopped the podcast and say, hey, man, don't you ever tell nobody that again. Y'all have never heard anything like that from us because we protect the kids. We are from it. But I would think if we, so if we say something, I, I would think that you would think that, yeah, the guys that are from it that actually have the relationships that have known these people for years <laughs> are the ones that know what they're talking about. Whether you believe it or not, we know what we're talking about. We may not sound or look like the other people, right? But our information runs deep. Our relationships run deep. And for people that want to question because we said something that didn't feel good to you guys, you can't question whether we're Kane fans or, or whether we're for the Canes. I mean, listen, man, if you got a brother or a friend or somebody that's with you and all they do is tell you good shit, then they're probably not really your friend. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think I would think we should question our loyalty towards the kids more than the team because, we, you know, we, we're not here for the team. We're here for the kids. At the end of the day, we started this. We started doing what we're doing for kids in our neighborhoods. It's, it's, it's true. It's true. And yeah. a lot of them don't have representation. A lot of them don't know how to navigate between adults, uh, not talking to them, between adults, telling them some, something's going to happen and they trust them because when they got recruited, they told them it was family. A lot of them don't know how to navigate through that stuff. Um. So, 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 yeah, we, we and we know these things. I mean, it's a gift and a curse. But these are the things we know. I know a lot of y'all, when it comes to football, y'all just want to get away from y'all wife, drink a beer, go out on Saturdays, watch the game, and hope that we're good. And that's about as far as y'all want it to go. You know what I'm saying? And and us saying something that, that doesn't sit right with you or your team or your coach, uh, it messes up, yeah. It messes up your September and your November because you don't want it fucked up before it started. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. For those people, I understand, man. But at the same time, if something's not right that we see is not right, we're not just going to sit here and not say nothing ever again. We're going to say something. And y'all could take it how y'all want, but just know, man, the race card, I mean, listen, bro, it, the, the race card, I, that's something that, that's low-hanging fruit. You know what I'm saying? That's a, That's an easy way out. Nobody said anything about race. I said talent. How did Virginia Tech feel when they saw Hendon Hooker 10 Alabama ass up? I'm sure they felt pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, man. At the end of the day, again, um, you know, you it's information. You know what I'm saying? We try to we try to be media. You know what I'm saying? Media's job is to rely information that isn't getting to you guys we try to do that but at the same time we try to protect both the kids and we we do a lot of protection for the school so it's like i don't know you know um it's just all emotions man and you got to understand i understand i've been having people like i've turned my notifications off seven years ago got seven hundred thousand followers but y'all have 430 people here x and me and hayes had 700 people at the same time I'm proud of what we built, bro. I'm proud. Of, I'm proud. I'm proud of what we built from the ground up. Nobody, there was no nobody told us how to do this. But at the same time, you're not going to question just because we're not as big as the others or our platform is big or we wasn't there as long. You can't. You can't question our words because I mean, we can keep talking if we want to keep talking. We could talk about a lot. <laughs> But but you but you you always tell me this all the time, Speed. I make I, me personally, you be like, man, yeah, you make yourself too as too accessible to them. Where when they say something, then I kind of take it like, oh man, they said this. I don't they, like. It's always they said, and he yeah. always coming to me talking about, hey man, they said this. Who is they X? Yeah, like, I, I, I kind of be. I, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, look, I'm I'm still I'm still young at this stuff. Bro. It's like, come on, man. You know, at the end of the day, man. 
we do this for for y'all. We do this for the for the for the fans, for the kids. And yeah, no, we're not gonna do everything that you guys like. I mean, that's life. If every we do everything you like, there's something wrong. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah, listen, but, and for the people that think I was taking shots at Reese and shots at Emory, no, nah, man, never I'm taking shots at them. Um, I. I drove did I drive? I drove to Florida State to see Emory beat Florida State ass, bro. Like, like I'm a Kane fan at heart. If I had a dime for every time somebody called Jacory a sorry motherfucker, I'd be rich. Mm. I'd be rich. So, so no, it's it's sports, and sometimes we're gonna talk. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna talk and it's gonna sound rough. Um, but I believe Emory. I, I try not to judge Emory on his first two games because I don't like judging quarterbacks early, like like early. A lot of times quarterbacks have to get in there, have to get in their groove. Um, but it wasn't really at them. My thing is, how did they get in front of a kid that was the starter a few months ago, the start of spring football? And if if Jacory was to leave, are y'all cool with? The kid from Albany, Great Danes, or Emory, who coming off an injury, being the ones back up Cam Ward. And a lot of y'all say y'all are. Y'all say y'all watch Emory. I mean, y'all watch Reese, um, watch this film, and he was kicking ass down there at one double A. Then that's fine. I asked the question, but that don't change. That's not going to change how I feel. I think Corey <laughs> is a goddamn baller. And I said it from the first time he stepped on the podium. I said James Williams was a baller when he was struggling. And, and that's and that's what I believe. So man, like anybody that's wrong, man, let's let's get it out of the way. It's, this is not about, about race, man. You got people making YouTube videos, you got people starting spaces, man. I'm here to tell you this. That's part for the course, man. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. I think that's just part of it. It's not so separately. When you're doing something, people have to be talking about you, or you ain't doing shit. That's part of the course. So, 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 like, yeah, I was flattered at what Coach Coop did. <laughs> you know I, was, what I'm I was flattered. That's part of the course. Well, goddamn it, we must have done said something finally. Man, man. that was corny than a mother. What he did. It, 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 it was not. Fuck I'm that sorry. Shit, right? that, that was. I, I, I let him know. I ain't gonna lie, man. Y'all, 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 <laughs> yeah, but 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 y'all gotta understand, man. That's part of it, man. You ever went in? You ever went to Floyd Mayweather Instagram and looked at his comment section? You ever went to? Like, yeah, it's part of it, bro. Like when you're doing something, people are gonna talk, especially when they think that you don't left them. <laughs> They're gonna talk. It's part of it. So I understand yeah. it comes. I understand it comes with it. Yeah, it's, that's part of life, man. You go, you gonna always have somebody that don't, doesn't like something you do because guess what? They want to do it and they can't. You know what I'm man, saying? It took, a lot of, it took a lot of hard work. It took a lot of standing on Saturdays with a camera in my head and that hot ass sun. So I mean, I I pay I paid the dues, man. So I don't I yeah. don't I don't think it's possible to cancel us. Like <laughs> I don't I don't think it's possible. You can't, I don't, you can't I count the dues. I got all the receipts. You can't you can't cancel for one the streets the streets in South Florida love us. I mean they you can't take that away. They love us. And when I mean the streets in South Florida, I'm talking about the players, the high school coaches, the parents, they love us. So there's nothing you can do to say that's gonna make them not love us. And the crazy thing is the same people who do the most talking are the same people who see us Saturday and, and hold their hand out to give us five. And that was up, yeah. But I mean, but it's yeah. it's, it's it's part of it, man. It's 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 it's, it's part of it, man. But, but I'm here to say, bro, listen, media, like a lot of things that black people have done, we've came late, right? Like you see Roland Martin and you see Joe Buttons and you see guys getting into media, but we were never the face of it. Growing up, man, we saw maybe one black person on the phone and the rest was, they looked, they was in suits and, and media never looked at us. We never owned any media. Um, so all the rules that was created wasn't created for us. Credible sources and checking your sources and you I got two sources. I checked it checked out. It wasn't created for us So what do you do when the guys from the fabric of the shit? 
starts a media company. Who I need to check my sources with? I grew up playing basketball with Bane Daddy. He dapped me up every day. I need to check that source. I knew Rod Mack since I was eight, played on my first youth football team. I need to check that source. I think it comes down to respect. Yeah, it's a new day, bro. Like, it, like it's it's a new day, and I and I, it took me a long time to get here, but I realized I know all these guys. Mike Thompson, shout out to him, Miami International School. We got three hundred kids at his school. I think every fucking football player in Dade County goes to Mike Thompson School. I knew him when he didn't have a car. Now he got three Benzes. I know these people. So I need to check my sources. My sources is the source. So, so, so you don't have to, you have to change how you kind of look at things because there's a different player in the game. Now, am I bigger than these companies? Two, four, seven, on three. No way, man. These guys got money out their ass. But we always got to get it out the mud, bro. We always got to get it out the mud. That's part of the course for us, man. A lot of people that look like you attacking you the loudest, bro. I mean, crabs in the bucket. That's all. I, I mean, I, I, it, it, it's <laughs> I, you're you're right. I mean, you, you're right. So so it can't be a race thing, right? Because you got other black people saying what they got to say. But sometimes when you get when people think you have left them or you you've gotten far from them, they can't relate to you sometimes. And I understand. I, I, I think I think sometimes we um we get away from ourselves, right? Uh, you spoke you spoke earlier to X about making himself too accessible, right? And I think as 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 fans or friends of the show or whatever you guys may may, may want to say, um, it's weird that you guys won't take that and say, oh shit, that's true. Like yeah, these guys are accessible. So instead of me going and you know going off at the mouth and saying this and saying that, why don't I just fucking DM one of these guys or why don't I just fucking get the group me or whatever it may be and shit, we can say like, bro, why you saying that? That don't sound like blah 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 blah. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? Instead of just got to be all this backdoor shit or this shit over here, that shit over there, that doesn't make sense. Like, oh shit, fuck it. Uh, the dude, uh, Coop that made the show, like, bro, instead of just like. Throwing that fucking tweet up there to do your show, you could have did that show without that goddamn tweet, right? <laughs> you did the show with the tweet, but you could have took no nah, fuck that. You could have took the time to fucking DM them and say, "Hey man, I want to use y'all tweet for our show because it's this, that, and the third. You didn't do that, so when you leave that show up there, you see people in the comment section attach attaching that shit to saying, "Oh, Caneville is making it a race issue." Well, goddamn it, that that was none of none of that was in the tweet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the same goes for but the same goes for people in these spaces, bro. Like y'all know damn well how easy it is to reach out to one of us. Well, I ain't gonna say one of us, but I'm saying to reach out to Streeter or to reach out to X or come to the group me or what or whatever. That's easy. Y'all have that access. But we get outside of ourselves and we stop thinking about that shit. You know what I'm saying? You're not thinking that damn. I can just hit one of you boys up and shit because they they from the mud just like just like me. Yeah, they don't. It's the same reason Uncle Al got killed right here where we at, and the same reason Young Dolph got killed in his hometown. It's the same reason. Yeah, yeah. The same, yeah, same reason. Most of the guys who who, who doing something, they just leave their hometown because that's why Rick Ross is probably in Atlanta. Be, be, because the op, what you're saying, Cal, makes a lot of sense. Damn, we got somebody right here that's that's part of the media, or part of what's the name? You know what I'm saying? We could just holler at him, maybe partner with him, maybe we can put some. Yeah, it should be like a, a resource, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they become they they become something else. You know what they I'm saying? They become the op. They we call it today. Call it. They become the op. That's what it is, man. Um, right. We are gonna get off that topic because I don't care. You know, I, it, like the um, Kyle just say, man, y'all can reach out to me and guess what? X me, not anybody else. X will pull up. If you got something to say that, 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 that you don't agree with, we could talk about it face to face. I ain't right. doing no more back and forth. And patience. I mean, the truth gonna come out. I mean, we got. I'm patient. Like when I when I started investing in the stock market, I learned a lot of persons. I learned how to wait. Like eventually, somebody's gonna transfer. Somebody's gonna go to another school, and we're gonna see if they can play or not. You know what I'm saying? So patience, patience is is a virtue, and I'm and I'm and I'm good with that, man. But don't don't put the race. Don't put the race thing on me. That's that's low hanging. 
I yeah, never, it's, it's I've crazy. never been able Speed to tell because... if somebody was racist or not. Like, I, that's it... something I don't go through life trying to figure out whether you're racist or not. <laughs> I, I don't, that's not that's not something that I'm not built like that. I don't go through life looking for those indicators. And and just because he's black and I'm black, then you're gonna say it's a race thing is is it's childish, to be honest with you. It's childish. I mean to, to be quite frankly honest with you, University of Miami know what I'm talking about. To hell with the rest of y'all think. They know firsthand what I'm talking about. So that's Kind of like all I really care about, to be quite frankly honest with you. Yeah, man. So it is what it is. We're gonna get back to we got spring, spring, what one more spring practice tomorrow, and then you have the spring game Saturday. Um again, it's gonna be not a not scripted spring game. Um, it's gonna be, you know, they'll give them a certain amount of plays to go on, go off of and stuff like that, and then Everything else would be just get it out the mud. Um, who's going to be included in the two, three deep roster, and who's not? And you go from there. The staff will will jump in the portal fast immediately because it's going to open April fifteen. There's already some names getting put in, um, and you go from there. Uh, Ralph, what's up? You had a question? Yes, sir. What's going on, fellas? Uh, it up. Great, great, uh, great space. I just want to touch on a little bit of football, if y'all don't mind. Um, so I've heard different uh, viewpoints about my favorite position, which is the offensive line. is not the sexy position, but so far in the spring, um, I know there's a, a elephant in the room with the left guard position. So uh. I mean. I know it's the spring, and I don't know if y'all touched on that. It's just the spring, I know. Um, but uh, what's it looking like? What's y'all opinion? And what y'all, you know, from what y'all been hearing well, and seeing? Hopefully, 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 your assessment or what you've heard doesn't include the the coach's nephew. <laughs> because if that's, if that's if that's what you come up and ask now, I'm not, I'm not going to answer that because it was just. A couple of days of practice. He's not going to be in no game for us starting the season or nothing like that. Um, Samson, no, Pan Pancake, Pancake has been working out at left guard. Matt McCoy also. Um, Samson has been working out at right tackle also. Matt McCoy has been working out at right tackle also. Um, you know, it, it's been a, I mean, I don't even want to say this guy's name, but I'm going to say it. it it's Zion, Zion is back out there. Right. Um, so you can list by fall camp come if these guys are still on the team. You can have pretty good depth at offensive line. I think the only issue we was looking at was can Zach Carpenter come in and be the immediate replacement for Matt Lee? Right. Um, as of now, it's looking like he's that guy, but he's not Matt Lee. So I guess we won't know until we actually see a game with him uh, playing in um, orange and green. He's not Matt Lee. We can get that out there. Everybody, Zach Carpenter is Matt Lee. He's not Matt Lee. So, what well, actually talking about from a physical uh, yeah, I was gonna say, what do you mean by that? Or like a, okay, a he's, leadership? He's physically, he's physically gifted. Um, He's not the leader Matt Lee is. He's not okay. the bully center that Matt Lee is. He, he's not a good puller. Okay. He's not, he's not a good puller, but as far as him blocking man up, zone blocking, he's a damn good blocker. He's okay. a good pass blocker. But when it comes to pulling, he's just not what Matt Lee did for us. Matt Lee did a hell of a job. Right? Probably the best job we've seen in a long time at center. So I'm going to say that. He's not Matt Lee, but he's not bad. He's a damn good player for us. He's going to be a damn good player for us. So, yeah, don't, don't buy into that. The nephew playing stuff like that. That was just, you know, pictures and a few practices. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that like he was going to be a star. Like that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm of the mindset that whatever Mario do on that O-line at this point, I'm just going to ride with whatever decisions that he's making because um, I'm that confident in his, you know, decisions in the offensive line. So it don't matter. If he says that this guy is the, is the guy for this spot, then, you know, as a fan, I'm rocking with that. Hey, Axel, you had a Bigfoot sighting? 
<laughs> yeah, we did. We did. You saw yeah. Yeti. You saw Loch Ness monster Nelson. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. We hey, he's out there. He's out there. Where he's running. Um, I, I he, he heard he heard he got some reps in the other day, which was Tuesday. Um, I'm not yet. I'm not quite yet ready to jump back on the Zion's train. Um, he has to be available. That's it. I, I want to see him available, but at the same time. I think we have other capable offensive linemen. You know, uh, they just did a good job in recruiting offensive linemen the last two seasons. So, hey, actually, I think Isaiah Horry gonna take that next step for us. Yeah, it's looking yeah. like he's taking that next step, man. He's he's yeah. he's being the big physical receiver that we have needed. Um, but the possession guy. You know, and, and look at our offense from last season. Um, if you had to question which receiver was the possession guy, you wouldn't even know we had one. We didn't. It was like if we needed a possession guy, we was throwing the ball to Strepo. Um, <clears throat> obviously, the quarterback who was throwing the ball, he was going to throw it to him anyway. But um, when you're a big body receiver, you're supposed to be most likely that possession guy. And it looks like it looked like Zay is going to be that possession guy where you could throw him the the third and seven. He's going to get the first down. You know what I'm saying? And if you need a big play, he can go get the big play. But we need that big play. Let's get this first down to keep this job going, receiver. You know what I'm saying? It don't always got to be George. You got to make a big play, or Shepel. You got to make a big play. You know what I'm saying? We need a man. It's third and six. We need uh, the big six foot three four receiver to go run that eight yard route and get the the damn eight yards right there. First down, keep mm -hmm. keep the drive moving. Man, I, ex, I think as long as Mario here, I'm not worried about no offensive line. The offensive line gonna be <laughs> the offensive line gonna be straight. Long as long as Mario here. Well, I, I'm not worried about out. I'm not worried about the talent. I'm thinking that the talent level is going to be at Miami. I think. If Mar once Mario allows his coaches to do their job, well, I'm just talking about the offensive line. Like I ain't never worried about the offensive line. Long yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah, not the offensive line. Matter. Yeah, they, they, they always gonna fix that. That's gonna be on point. So that's something that that I think is always gonna be on point. Hey, Streeter. Um, I was in a space about a week or two ago, and Luther Campbell mentioned to me or us that. Mario really is focusing in on like game situations and clock management. Have you heard anything about that? Hey, you heard anything about that? <laughs> no, I'm being serious. That? I, I, no, okay, so can't, I'm not making a that? joke. Yet. That's what we were told. No, no, say, say that again, Cam. <laughs> what they have? What they got? A class or something? They got? What they got? They got? Well, you could, go think, they got a, uh, uh, what well, they hold call on. It? Clinic you can go to called called get give me a to baby get a to well, baby. You know what they should do, and I try. I'm trying to get this over to him. Ernie Adams, who's the football researcher for Bill Belichick, he's like this old white guy that went to high school with them. He was a guy that managed the game for Bill, mm -hmm. basically. And the the Julian Edelman, and I'll send it over to you, Street. I'll text it over to you after this space. He did like a three-hour interview that I watched. I mean, I learned a lot about football in the Patriot way. And 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 he's the guy that he, he played high school football at Phillips Academy with Bill. Uh -huh. And that's Bill's most trusted guy. And he has a headset right next to the coaches. And in certain situations, he'll turn on the mic and say, Bill, right here, we got to go for it. These are the three plays. These are, these are the scenarios. He's the one who talked Bill in that first Tom Brady Super Bowl. He said, Bill. We can't sit on the ball. We go into overtime. That defense gets on the field. We're going to lose the game. Get military in position and explain why. I mean, this guy is a football savant. Every well, team yeah, needs a guy like him. Well, yeah. So Miami has that. We have, well, I guess. We do? Uh, Mar okay, uh, so obviously Mario not for Georgia it. Tech. Jesus. Mario, no, no, no. Or, no, listen, or Rutgers. Listen. Listen. Or Rutgers. Mario, Mario has, <laughs> two guys. He has two guys. He has two guys on, on his sideline that. One, uh, well, the, even the Georgia Tech game, he was telling him to do it, but he didn't do it. Two, he's, he's the guy. He's you know he's basically Mario's right hand man. He's supposed to be there. Um, I I think Mario probably. <laughs> he's just listening to him, man. It's not working. Yeah, now. it's not working that way because the Rutgers game was the same thing. 
Yeah, I mean, that Rutgers game, the thing that stands out to me, guys, is that the last three plays, we needed to go into the end zone, and we kept throwing passes in front of the sticks. And I'm thinking to myself, Mario, here's the problem. You need to throw the ball, and you have to make this clear to everybody. Guys, we got to stop the clock, which means that only happens with the first down or if we throw it towards the sideline. And I remember, and again, that game doesn't mean anything. I said, Mario, you got to learn how to coach games. You can coach football. He's not, that's not his strength. And I know people get pissed off when I say it, but there's just too much evidence against him in this regard. Yeah, no, no. Nah, nah. See, um, at the same time, I think, you know, if Mario, okay, if you're going to say, okay, it's Coach, Coach Dawson. Yeah, runs his offense. Coach Dawson is supposed to have somebody that's close to him, close to Mario, basically relying those plays to Mario. Um, The guys who I think Mario has that's that's – Speaking with him in those um, moments, I just don't know if he's he – pro- he cares when he's probably saying, I'm not I'm not going that route. You know, yeah, I'm, but X, Streeter, can I, can I give you another scenario that people don't talk about where I thought he bungled everything? And, again, he doesn't understand modern-day football. First half of Louisville. We, we're up on Louisville. We have the ball. Uh, and we have to realize, uh, I think Louisville was getting the ball back. The way we handled that last drive, it's almost like, well, let's just punt. And I'm thinking to myself, you just completely shifted the momentum of that game because you that's one of those situations you have to manage and you have to understand, are we getting the ball out of halftime or is the other team? Because that should completely, absolutely dictate the way you think the game of football because you're trying to squeeze possessions. Mario has to understand one thing. If you're going to be a good coach, you're going to be a guy that's going to win me a game or two that's 50-50 or are you going to lose a game that's 50-50? That's the difference between a championship and just being a guy that gets paid a lot to recruit. Mm, let me ask you a question. You hear me? Steve, huh? you hear me? Oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, did you, when the last time you watched that Rutgers game? The Rutgers game, uh, I watched it the day it happened. And I haven't watched oh, it see? since. I, I just watched a few clips of a Jakari, okay. but I didn't watch the whole game. I watched it four days ago. Um, partly what you're saying, I agree with, with, with as, well, as far as the coaching stuff. I don't know why uh, Mario still has those two timeouts in his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> we had two timeouts uh, left? Yeah. We, he no, that makes it even worse yeah. then. Mm-hmm. That makes it even right? worse. So Jeez. by no means this is me defending Mario. But I got I to gotta speak up on Jakari and his, I guess, his ball placement. And we talked about this in front of the other day. Um, and I haven't seen Jakari on screen, so I, I personally have not seen him, so I don't know how he's progressed uh, since then. But um, one particular, the play that we lost the game on, because he, he scored, he ran it in. He had some pretty uh, questionable decisions in the pocket, uh, driving in, and then he just eventually ran it in. That put us up at 24. When I say question, I mean there's one play, you go back and watch, there's one play where he threw a fade ball to X and he threw an inside slant to Isaiah Horton, which I don't understand what the purpose was that. And, and a lot of those passes were in the, in the coverage. Um, but the play that you're talking about, you know, we talked talk about um, earlier in the space, um, being able to put the ball in certain windows and uh, how you may not feel like you fixed the system. But play he threw the X. Um, X got to the sticks. It was a fourth and six. The third and six before that, X had a wide open seam. He threw it at his, at his kneecaps. That would have been the first. And the player that won the game, X got to the sticks and he threw it behind him. And X had to come back to catch the ball. And then he turned around and tried to dive for the first. He was short and the ref called him down. That's ball game. Yeah, that's the play. That's the play. With, that's the play when Lou Cristobal missed his block, and Jacory had to step into it. I know what you're talking about. But go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless, because I'm not saying that play was that we we spoke at nauseum about why whatever his number is was on the field. But I digress. Um, all those pa- all the pockets that he had were terrible pockets that he had absolutely no time in. They weren't the best pockets that they definitely weren't the pockets that TVD saw all season. But they and Tyler. Saw all season, but um, they weren't completely terrible either. Um, we gotta we gotta be able to kind of spread that 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 wealth when it comes to 
finger pointing if we're going to do that, that all the all parties are wrong, right? It can't just always be, oh, it's only Mario because Mario can't coach. There are parts, of, like I just said, that he showed some, some incompetence, absolutely. But we also got to look at how some of that those those things played out for people on the field. They coach the game. They don't play. So I, I say that all that to say we got to be fair about when we point our point our fingers at who is responsible, who is to blame, because it's not it's not always a singular point of of a, of attention when it comes to that. Hey, Manny, hey, hey, Kim. Um... Uh, yeah, y'all spoke about uh, the, the Mario keeping the timeouts in his pocket. Well, you know, I I was told he kept the timeouts because so he could go out and recruit. Now nah, I'm just joking. Oh, oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna call you Andrew Galata. That's a low blow, X. God <laughs> dog, we feel like Riddick Bowe's balls right now. God <laughs> dog, man. Nah, nah. But but X, listen. I, I heard X. I heard I heard he uh he just gonna have four timeout halves. In the spring game on Saturday. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, listen, listen. Oh, again, man. Again, um, I've been to practice. I've been to practice. Um, there's other people have been to practice. I could I could tell you that it's it's the it's Mario is doing things a lot different this season. Um, definitely what we haven't seen the first two seasons. He's he's around coaching, he's just coaching, he's letting his coordinators coach football, he's letting his coaches coach their position group. He's walking around. He's happy. Um, he's getting after him. He's making them work hard. Um, it's a different culture. Players are holding themselves accountable if, if they're doing things wrong, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's 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 just different. Um, it's you know, I think this season, man, is is going to be a good season. One, we got a quarterback who's special. We got a quarterback who's special. When you have a quarterback who's special, um, he could dictate how the season goes. You know, um, three to four games last season. If 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 we had a quarterback that was special, we have a damn good season. How much just average. You know okay. what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. it, it's here, man. Um, it's a lot of excitement, man. Um, not just with Miami fans, man. I'm telling you, it's it's. Analysts around college football saying, man, maybe, maybe, just maybe, maybe this might be the year Miami can get it going. You know, um, and we'll see. We'll see. Ahead, What's Bob. up? Bob, Bob had his hand. Uh, Go ahead, yeah, Bob. I had heard him talking about that block. That was Rivers who missed that block. That one, Crystal Ball. I watched that game, too. There was a, one of them was chipping, and one of them had somebody cross 